Welcome to my channel, Everyday I'm Mothering. It's time again to talk about everything that my family of five ate for the past week. You know, since January, we've been doing plant-based, that means dairy, no eggs, meat-free, and we've asked ourselves to try a new recipe every night since the beginning of January. And this week is so different, we have found some more amazing recipes that I can't wait to share with you. Before I get started, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that bell down below to be notified about the next video. Our shopping haul video is linked in the description box down below, so you can watch that and get information on all the ingredients you'll need for the recipes for this week. On Monday, we did a cashew crusted cauliflower steak. The technique for this is similar to that buffalo cauliflower sandwich I made a few weeks ago. So you basically take your cauliflower, you slice it up into your steaks, you dip them in the batter and then you bake them in the oven and they become nice and brown and crispy. And it's really similar if you've ever had like one of those chicken in the oven type meals where they're covered with crackers or breadcrumbs or whatever. It's really similar to that. And so we served it with some mashed potatoes, asparagus, and then we made that brown mushroom gravy that we had had a few weeks ago with the cabbage schnitzel, I believe. And it was just, delicious mixed in with that brown crusty cauliflower and the mashed potatoes. It just all worked really well together. And this is one of those dishes that, you know, it seems like it's pretty simple components. It's just seems like a classic kind of comfort meal. It's not too elaborate. It's not some crazy spices and flavors. So the kids really enjoyed it. We really enjoyed it. And it really wasn't that difficult to do. There's some multiple components, but Really, there wasn't that much prep work or anything like that. So all in all, we really enjoyed it. I was really surprised with how tender, yet still crunchy with the outside of that brown batter that the cauliflower steaks really were. So on Tuesday, we decided to recreate one of our favorite dishes, and it's a butter chicken Indian style dish, and you make it in the Instapot, and it's so good and one that we really love, and we wanted to try to recreate it. And I figured it'd be pretty easy. We're just gonna switch out the chicken with the tofu, now it does have butter and heavy cream in it, so I just used our plant-based butter and some coconut cream. Now we do like making this all in the Instapot. It's just an easy way to do it. It's you know obviously one pot and you've got your sauce, you have your rice in there. Now, because you're not making the chicken in it, you probably don't necessarily have to do it that way. It's just easier for us with the rice, but you could definitely just do this on the stove and heat your sauce up. The food I just sauteed it on the stove, use the same spices that I had used in the Instapot sauce and it browned up nicely. And really, you know, by the time you take chicken or whatever it was before and you mix it in with all the sauce and the rice, you really kind of taste it anyway. So switching out the tofu for it really didn't make that big a difference. The texture and consistency was pretty much the same and it all just kind of blends together. So it was a pretty successful swap. If I didn't have the chicken in the Instapot, you know, in the future, I would add a little bit of water or vegetable broth in there too. To make sure you have enough sauce and it doesn't start to burn a little bit on the bottom, the tomatoes can do that in the Instapot. So that would just be my note if you're gonna make this recipe is to add a little bit more liquid in there, you know, do your tofu separate, and then after you blend everything in, you add your butter, you add your cream, that's when you can add the tofu in and kind of stir it all up. And then that's just delicious over some rice. And then we made that naan again that we had made, actually I think we've made it like three times now maybe since I first tried it out a couple weeks ago. It's just super easy and it's really a delicious thing to have on hand. So that was our first, you know, recreating one of our favorite dishes and it went really well. On Wednesday we decided to have Mexican night and you know that's one of our favorites and we have found so many delicious Mexican recipes in the past week's videos. But this time we decided to try tacos and we haven't really done like the hard shell replacing that ground beef style taco yet. So I thought this would be something really fun and neat and also pretty easy for us all to do. I found this recipe and it used quinoa for the filling of the meat, which sounds totally strange since it's a rice and I had no idea how this was actually gonna taste like meat or be a filling, but I decided we'll try it. So, you know, you just cook it on the stove like you would normally do and then you bake it in the oven with all the seasonings. You turn, you know, you, you stir it, you bake it some more and it really does turn like crispy and it starts to kind of crumble and has a really, and really kind of has that meat-like texture. Now I will say it does not stick or clump together the way meat would typically do with the grease. So it can be a little bit messy. And by the end of it, you kind of have more of a taco salad situation with everything on your plate, but it was really neat. We decided to go pretty simple on the toppings. We just really wanted to try the actual quinoa filling. So we didn't want any toppings to cover that. So we just did a little bit of shredded lettuce, tomato, and a little bit of vegan cheese on top. 
But then for our side, we tried this seven layer dip. Saw this, I knew we were gonna have to try it. My girls love refried beans. Like they will just sit there and just eat them by themselves. They love them so much. And this dip is very, very simple, but it's basically just beans, cheese sauce, you make some fresh guacamole, we bought some pico salsa, and if you want to put black olives, some vegan sour cream on it, you know, whatever you want to do. And it makes such a pretty, so it'd be really nice for a party or something too, but tasty dip. That entire bowl was gone. Everybody was dipping their chips in, and like scraping the bowl clean. They loved it. I will say, even though we loved the actual seven layer dip with the cheese sauce in it, I was not a fan of this cheese sauce. And this is one of the things that's been the hardest for us to find is a queso replacement. I love queso. It's one of my favorite things. When we go out to eat at a restaurant or we get it to go, it's just get that big tub of white queso and I can just make a meal out of that. So I'm really still struggling to find a good replacement for it. We found a replacement for like mac and cheese pasta sauce that I've talked about that we really like. You know, we've tried the one with the carrots and potatoes. It's okay on nachos. I'm still not a huge fan of just sitting there like dipping your chips in it. And this one says it was the best vegan queso. And I was like, okay, we're gonna try it. This is gonna be it. But to me, this one just tasted so much like cashews. It was almost like you were eating melted, like almond butter, cashew butter. And it just didn't, and I don't know, that flavor, just something was off about it to me. Now in the dip, you know, it all mixed in well and it was really tasty. But just trying to dip your chips in on the side, I did not like it and the girls didn't like it. They were like, we are not eating the sauce. We don't like it. I'm like, well, it's in the dip. But I was like, well, it's okay in that. But on its own, it's just way too strong on the cashew flavor. Now, I have found a recipe that promises to be like a white queso. And I'm going to try it next week. And I am hoping that that's the one. But as of now, if I was looking for a queso, I would recommend you just get that one from Target I talked about in my Target haul. Simple, you're not having to make it. And it's really tasty so far. That would be my go-to. But I still have hope that I'm going to find something. All together, the tacos and the dip, it was a delicious, fun, like family night dinner. Thursday this week, our schedule was changing and we're gonna start having a nighttime activity. So I was looking for some type of meal that would be quick and easy that Craig kind of get started and be ready when I got home with the girls. So I found this recipe and it was called mushroom version on with potato cauliflower mash. And it seemed like it'd be pretty simple because you're basically making everything in the Instapot, even the potatoes and the cauliflower. And I thought, he can put that on and we get home, I'll mash it up and get it plated and all that. But I felt to take in consideration how much prep work was gonna go into this. I guess he was like cutting and getting everything ready almost the entire time we were gone. So note, if you make this, there is quite a bit of cutting and prep work. I will say, for it to take that much work to do, this has probably been our least favorite recipe since we've started this plant-based journey. And it's not that the recipe was bad or it lacked flavor. It's this is the first meal where I can say I genuinely felt like I was missing out on meat. It was essentially, if you think about how you used to make, or you've seen like the pot roast with all the sauce and the vegetables and you serve it like mashed potatoes or something, it's like that meal without the pot roast. So you basically have the sauce and mashed potatoes. And it just really felt like it was lacking something. And I think part of the problem is doing that potato cauliflower mash in the Instapot. They just got way too waterlogged. And I like a really fluffy, like kind of thick mashed potato, or if you're adding a little bit of cauliflower. And when they get waterlogged, you know, it tends to get really wet. And when you have that kind of consistency and you're putting a liquid sauce on top, it's just not gonna be a winning combination in my opinion. Now I could see doing this recipe without the mash and putting it over noodles, like a wide noodle. And I think that would be really good. Like the stew part itself was very flavorful and really good. It just needs something to boost it up a little bit. I don't know that I would recommend this recipe for you unless this is something that you've liked in the past and you're looking for like a veganized version of it. Then I say try this, but Think about doing it with pasta or rice or something like that instead of the mash. So again on Friday, you know that we have to do quick and easy meals because Elena has her nighttime theater. So I like to have a dish that I can quickly put together and it's ready when Craig gets home and we can eat before she has to go to class. And I like to also include a pasta dish every week because the girls love it and they're usually pretty simple. Well, this one, very simple and very quick. Creamy sun-dried tomato pasta with garlic soy. And it calls for garlic soy curls. I haven't used those, I haven't really seen them, so I just used regular soy and just sliced it up and cooked it like the recipe as far as like searing it on the pan with the seasonings. But I just cut it in thin strips like you would typically see like chicken and one of these type of dishes and it worked out just fine. 
when I say quick, this recipe is literally the amount of time it takes you to boil your water and cook your pasta. And that's it. By the time your pasta is done, your sauce and veggies are done, you toss them all together and it's on the table. So this is something that I would definitely recommend. You know, you probably have most of the ingredients on hand anyway. Whenever you need a quick and easy meal, have this one in your back pocket because it is so delicious. Everyone loved it and I actually doubled the recipe and we still didn't have any leftovers. And I will say that's one thing that I'm finding with a lot of these recipes is that we're not having leftovers and typically in the past we have. So I'm starting to double them and I'll let you know when we've doubled and what that looks like because we are a family of five and my 20 month old honestly eats as much as my younger girls at this point right now. So we have to find a way to make it work for us and just want you to be aware of how much this is actually making in case you have a family our size. But back to this pasta, really creamy and rich and flavorful and a really good, simple, basic pasta. Let's have optional mushrooms or tofu, but we ended up using both because I love mushrooms and everyone else does except for Adeline and she just picks hers out. But I like that just to give it that kind of extra boost. But the sauce from this pasta actually comes from cashew milk, which I've never made my own cashew milk before, but it was so easy to do. You just blend them in the blender with some water and it really gave this nice kind of creamy rich sauce on it because I'm not usually a fan of like tomato based pastas I'll eat them occasionally but I tend to like more of that alfredo garlic the creamy milky cheesy based ones and this really recreated that style without having a lot of sauce now if you're looking for more of the alfredo I definitely recommend that cauliflower alfredo that we talked about a couple weeks ago for that style recipe but this one for what it was was absolutely delicious and it is one that we will definitely be including in the future and that I would highly recommend that you try. As you guys know we do intermittent fasting during the week which is why I don't really talk about breakfast and lunch then that's mostly just leftovers or like quick things we've gotten in my haul videos but for the weekend we do try to do breakfast lunch and dinner as much as we can if we're not full and we like to do one sweet and one savory breakfast. So on Saturday we did our sweet-ish breakfast we did a pumpkin baked oatmeal now I will say my oldest daughter does not like oatmeal. She does not like grits. It's like a texture thing for her. But if it's baked, she will eat it. And the other girls just loved this. And there's something about just that pumpkin and pecan flavor combination. It's just so good. And it smells so good. So we did end up doubling this recipe and the entire thing was gone as well. I think Adeline, my four-year-old, might have had three or four servings. Put down a good chunk of it. We put pecans on top of half of it. Elaine doesn't care for pecans and with the baby as well. So we did half and half of that, but it was very flavorful. It wasn't that sweet. We added just a little drizzle of syrup on top. And really, I don't even know if you needed that. Girls, we called it a baked pumpkin breakfast cake. And they were like so excited about that concept. And it was a really good recipe. It was super simple to make. And it's one that I could see making on the weekend and having it to serve to the girls for breakfast throughout the week. Saturday for lunch, we made a vegan meatball sub. And these meatballs used chickpeas, which again, the concept just seems so strange to me, but it worked out so well. So you're basically just taking chickpeas, you're mixing them in your food process with the spices and the breadcrumbs. You know, you put them into a ball, you bake them. Now I will say in the future when I bake these, I will probably bake them a little bit longer, like five more minutes, and then maybe even broil them because I do like my meatballs to have more of a kind of crunchy, harder outside, especially when you eat them in a sub so they don't you know, squish so flat when you're like holding the sandwich, especially with chickpeas, like it seemed like they kind of squashed down a little bit. So I think doing that would just take it up just a little bit more. But all in all, this was really good. They really did taste like meatballs. The sub, you know, we just did a little bit of heated up marinara on top of the meatballs. We used the chow cheese. For me, I like to have mayonnaise, lettuce, and tomato on mine. Obviously the plant-based mayonnaise. And just toasted up the subs. And it was really good. But we all enjoyed our sandwiches. Now I will say that in the future, again, when I make this, I will double the meatballs. They just simply were not enough meatballs for the five of us. Especially, you know, when you're making a sub, I'm gonna need more than like three meatballs when they're about that big on my sub sandwich. So we all ended up still being a little bit hungry. So about an hour or so later, everyone was asking if we could have something to eat. And we had all been craving the sushi that we had last weekend. Now I think after I edited the video, seen it again throughout the week, those pictures just really stuck with us and the memory of that sushi. 
and we still had most of the ingredients in the seaweed and we're like you know what it was pretty easy to do let's just go in there and make some more sushi so we did and just like last week it was so good you know the kids really liked it they got in there this time and helped us roll it up and essentially we used the same thing we still had the carrot we still had some avocado i did the same thing just salting the tofu a little bit so it still kind of had that fish texture not so tough we didn't have any cucumber this time so we just used some celery but cut really thin you know it provided just a little crunch without being like too tough and it was just fine and we had our yum yum sauce again the soy sauce and pat sushi is just delicious and if you like sushi i'm telling you this will hit a craving and then you're gonna probably crave this veggie sushi even more so there's your warning you will want this again once you have it since we ended up eating basically two lunches that day sushi was lunch number two we weren't super hungry for dinner so we didn't end up doing the big thing i had planned but we needed a little something so we decided to make cheesy ranch hamburger helper that we had had a couple weeks ago now and it's the one i was talking about earlier that i really love the sauce for pasta for me this tastes just like mac and cheese it's a really really good dupe for that using food style cheese sauce on top it's just really good but this time around we didn't have enough tofu to do the tofu crumbles like we had before in the recipe but we have the beyond beef meat crumbles now you know we like the beyond beef for the actual burgers they taste very similar but we were not huge fans of these crumbles you know we cooked it the same way we did before as far as like sauteing the tofu and using the same spices so it would be comparable but these are just pretty big they're not really even crumbles i would say they're more like chunks and they are pretty chewy so when you're eating this dish it dominated the plate and the texture was just a little off-putting so i don't think that we will get these again maybe be better suited like in a lasagna or some type of dish where you would expect the bigger chunks of beef maybe but even then i'm just not sure that i'm a huge fan of the texture now we do have their ground beef substitute i'm going to try that later this week in more of a spaghetti style dish so i will be curious to see how that compares to these but as of now I wouldn't buy these again morning star crumbles were probably better even though they were a little bit like drier and smaller but the flavor wise they were probably better than me but still this basic mac and cheese dish is a winner if you were just starting out just like i said when we first tried it i highly suggest that you start with this one your kids are gonna like it it's an easy way to get them on board show everybody that dairy free cheese free does not have to be nasty it's gonna taste like the mac and cheese they're used to and i think they're gonna be really happy with it and i decided to do breakfast burritos partly because we had some stuff left over in the fridge and you know when you meal plan you're trying to be efficient and you want to save money so you want to try to use these leftover ingredients still had a half a thing of that just egg that we've used in the past so i thought that would be perfect i'll cook that up we had some chorizo left that we had sauteed previously and you know we still had avocados so i'm like we'll just have these breakfast burritos I was so impressed by how these turned out. We love burritos. I mean, we love to stuff them full and it needs to be hearty, eggy, meaty. I mean, that's just what we're expecting and these completely delivered on that. So the Just Egg, you know I'm not a huge fan of it. I find it to be a little expensive. It doesn't really make that much. The texture, everything, it's okay. I mean, it's kind of like egg, but I'm still looking for, you know, an alternative to it. But in this case, I decided to do it the same way I typically do scrambled eggs, which is adding in some milk. And I've heard people say they do that too to kind of beef it up and make it, a, you know, make it a little bit more. It did not work. So if you're adding the milk in, it basically just makes it more liquidy and it ends up kind of bubbling and boiling that liquid out. And then you're left with what you had originally and it just takes longer to cook and it just looks wetter. So I would not recommend doing that. Just squirt it in the pan with some seasonings and that's how you need to cook it. Don't add any milk. At least in our case it did not help and it really i thought was not going to turn out and i got a little nervous it ended up being fine but i wouldn't do it in the future meatless chorizo we do like it we've had it on nachos and now in the burrito it's very tasty of course we need potatoes in our breakfast burrito this took a potato you know cubed it up added on our seasonings we did a little bit of olive oil some cumin some paprika garlic onion powder uh, parsley and then you just bake that at about 400 degrees for you know 20 minutes or so and then you can even broil it for a little bit after that and then we just layered all that stuff in there we did some fresh avocado we used our vegan sour cream in there as well and then you can do a little bit of hot sauce and it was a delicious breakfast burrito just hit the spot on that craving very satisfied with that for lunch that day i didn't really have a specific plan or recipe in mind i had a feeling that i was going to try to do some type of grilled cheese 
because they still had a loaf of big crusty bread left. And I saw some people talking about adding some stuff to grilled cheeses to take them up a notch and I was just tempted to try it out. So I decided to go down and just see what all we had in the kitchen and figure out what I wanted to make. What I ended up doing was using some avocado, spinach, garlic, um, some oil, and just putting those in the food processor and making this avocado spinach aioli type spread. Then I put that on our bread, we did our cheese, and we used again the chow cheese, and we actually had ran out of it, so we did half and half that, and the follow your heart cheese. And we like both of those. The chow is probably our favorite, and it melts a little bit better, but they're both good, and together, you know, they were a nice combination. Did that, put some sun-dried tomatoes on there as well, and just grilled them up. It was delicious. So, you know, you're taking your grilled cheese, just kicking it up a notch, and you're adding in all that good fat from the avocado. You're adding in your nice, healthy spinach. The sun-dried tomatoes were just a perfect touch to it. And then Craig and I really enjoyed dipping them in the mustard sauce that we had made last weekend in our game day video, which if you haven't seen, it's here, that we dipped the carrots and a dog in. That sauce was perfect with this grilled cheese. It just gave it that little bit of like extra spice and kick that it needed. Girls don't care for that sauce. They think it's too spicy, but we loved it. That was just a delicious lunch and the girls felt like they were eating these very fancy grilled cheeses and they were just all over that. Tonight, I decided to try a recipe that I have never made before and I wasn't really sure if I was even gonna like it, but I thought it's time just to try new things. The point of this is to experiment and learn to like these new foods. So I found a recipe for a baked sheet pan ratatouille over creamy polenta. And I've never had ratatouille. I didn't really know what it was, but it's a Disney movie. So I had no idea what to expect. But basically you're taking you know, a lot of vegetables, you're roasting them and then serving them over polenta. And it sounds really basic and really simple. And to be honest with you, I am not a huge fan of just like a roasted big thing of vegetables. I know people say to do it all the time and that it's so good. To me, it just never really sounded that appetizing. And even when I was thinking about making this recipe, it's like, oh, it's just a bunch of vegetables. I don't know that I really want this. Eh. but I was shocked at how this turned out. And I actually don't even have that much footage from it because I am not kidding. I was not prepared to really enjoy it that much. So I was just kind of half-hearted in the kitchen, like, oh, it's just time for dinner. Let me just get this on. And even Craig was like, I don't really care for eggplant. And so, but I had him in there and he was helping me. You know, we chopped up his eggplant, bell pepper, squash, tomato, garlic, and onion. And you're actually not even having to chop them except for the eggplant. You're really just doing like wedges so it doesn't take long to cut them at all and the garlic is whole and then you just roast it for 20 minutes toss it roast it again um, turn the temperature down let it sit in for about another 15 minutes and then you drizzle it with some balsamic vinegar on top I cannot describe to you how good this was it became caramelized and sweet and we had this entire two pans of vegetables and they were completely gone by the end of the meal. Like our kids were asking for seconds, not of the polenta, but of the vegetables. Like they were actually fighting over who was going to get the rest of the vegetables to eat. I could not believe it, how much they enjoyed this and how good it was. The polenta itself, I've told you um, Elena doesn't like grits and oatmeal or anything like that. Polenta is much smoother. So she was nervous about it at first, I think, but once she tried it, she realized she liked it. But the polenta, I had some issues with it cooking up with the recipe. It was extremely liquidy. I know they say creamy, but I mean, it was almost more like a soup. I even added a little bit more of the cornmeal. I cooked it a little bit longer, turned the heat up, and I even added some glucamon in at one point to thicken it. But it finally did thicken up. Really, once I took it off the heat and let it sit for a couple minutes, that's when it thickened up and got the texture that we were looking for, which was more of that uh, somewhere between like a mashed potato and grits type thicker texture. If you find that happening, like that might be something that you need to do but maybe you like it more soupy, I don't know. But for us, that's what we wanted was something a little thicker, a little heartier to hold the vegetables on. All in all, it was absolutely delicious. It is something that we will definitely make again. I was beyond impressed with really the simplicity of it, how many good vegetables there were, but the flavor of it and how much we all enjoyed it, I was absolutely shocked by. And that's one of the things I have loved the most about you know doing this plant-based eating, dairy-free for, uh, it's going on I think like five weeks now is that we have challenged ourselves to cook something new every night. We are finding so many things that we didn't think we liked, things that I thought were too hard to make, too complicated, and we're getting them down pat now. We're finding that these are the things we're now craving. We are actually enjoying them. We don't feel deprived. And that's been one of the best things about doing this. 
you know, you get into that food rut, you're making the same things every night, you're bored by dinner. In our case, we were getting so much takeout of Mexican and pizza. We felt like crap afterwards. I didn't feel like the girls were getting all their good vegetables and everything like we used to do. This has completely changed the way that we are in the kitchen and with meals now. And I would not trade that for anything. I am loving everything we're trying. The girls fight over vegetables and crave vegetables and ask for that. It's just absolutely so satisfying and gratifying to see that they're doing that. It was a little bit of a ramble, but all of that to say, another week of really delicious, great meals. We do do this every week. Make sure you subscribe, hit the bell to be notified about next week's video. I do want to say that we are getting ready to go on vacation, so things are a little crazy around here right now. So I'm not exactly sure what our upload schedule will be like for the next couple of weeks. Obviously, when we're on vacation, we're not going to be cooking and doing all that. If you're seeing things being delayed or not sure what's going on, that's the reason. But once we're back, we'll be back onto our schedule and doing things as normal. We'll be doing a video about what to expect as far as what we're going to continue eating and the meals that you'll see from us in the future. But that will be, you know, when we get back from vacation. I hope you heard something here that sounded good that you want to make. And as always, make sure to comment down below and tell me what you want to try or what you tried from last week that you loved. Bye, everyone. <music>